Welcome to episode number 20 of Create Your Vibrant Life podcast. This is your host, Padma Ali. Today, I have another very special guest. And as we continue on this journey of uncovering self-worth and bringing you another voice to dive more into this process, and that amazing person is Camden Hoke. Camden is the author of Roadmap to Radiance, and she shares her journey of turning adversity into opportunity. So as you listen to this conversation, notice how difficult, and I'm going to put difficult in quotes, difficult circumstances, because difficult circumstances is an interpretation. How do we know it's difficult? That's for another episode, but I'm going to put that in quotes and highlighting it for another time. Because I'm going to invite you to think about how you interpret life circumstances. Anyway, so as you listen to this conversation, notice how difficult circumstances can be an opportunity to shine and to shed old beliefs and stories that often hold us back. And that's what Camden talks about in this beautiful interview that I had with him. It's more like a conversation that I had with her. And she shares her amazing story. And when you're listening, I'm inviting you to think about your own experiences in your life that you have termed as difficult, that have either turned into opportunities, huge growth opportunities for you, or how you can allow your current difficult experiences to become an opportunity. One of the reasons I love having guests on my podcast is because sometimes hearing the same content from another person's viewpoint or sometimes hearing the content from a a different voice, it allows this information to sink in in a very different way. And I loved having this chat with Camden. She's just incredible. And as you will see for yourself why, I think she's just incredible. And without any further delay, introducing Camden Hoke. Welcome to the Create Your Vibrant Life podcast. If you are the type of person who is a visionary, who wants more from life, who has high dreams and aspirations, wants to evolve spiritually and impact the world, and in the meantime, have time and energy to do the things that are important to you, then whatever you do, tune into this podcast every week. I'm your host, Padma Ali. I help stressed out overachievers find clarity and awaken to their highest potential using my unique N-E-W, New You Blueprint. I combine neuropsychology, energy healing, and wisdom to create long-lasting changes, and that's what I bring to you in this podcast. I've had a successful career in the field of psychology for over 20-plus years, along with extensive training and experience in ancient healing practices, which I now bring to my coaching work with my clients. And that's what inspired me to do this podcast, to bring this knowledge and wisdom to the world. So I'm incredibly grateful for you to be a part of this journey with me, and I'm so excited to serve you. So welcome. So welcome, everyone. Today, we have a very, very, very special guest. Camden Hoke. Am I saying your last name correctly, Camden? Hoke. Hoke. Oh, there you go. Okay, Camden Mm -hmm. Hoke. And I'm so excited to interview Camden. I wish you could all have a camera and see Camden right now. She's just the best way I can describe her. Like she's just an embodiment of goddess energy. And there's just a lot of just calm and peace and grace to her. I just love Camden. And I'm so excited to interview her and have her share her wisdom to you all. So Camden, would you like to go ahead and just introduce yourself and share just a little bit about who you are? I would love to. Thank you for that beautiful um, welcome, Padma. I really appreciate that. I'm so happy to be here. And um, I love these conversations, you know, that we get to be really intimate here and come together. I live here in the Bay Area. 
I have been a, um, a life coach for over 10 years now, I would say formally. Um, I've actually been doing it longer, um, even when I was a personal trainer and other areas of transformative work that I was doing, um, but decided to make it official over, over 10 years ago. And um, I specialize in helping women really discover who they are. And, you know, as you know, as a woman, we go into all these different phases of our life, right? Whether we choose to be a mother or we're an entrepreneur or we work for a company or whatever, those are roles that we play. But as we go into those roles, we begin to shift from this inner space. And I love helping my clients discover who are they being? What is their, you know, what is their soul telling them and sharing with them as to who they are and what their mission is in this, these phases of life that we're all going through? So that's a little bit about what I do. I also work with men too, in the sense that men that are ready to come into, I'm just going to call it their feminine place, Mm -hmm. meaning who are they being? How are they relating to people? How are they coming into their heart? And that is a beautiful journey too. And I have that man that says, Hey, I want to know more about that side of me and I want to understand women. So that's super fun too. Wow. Wow. That's just so beautiful about both the male, the intertwining of the male and the the masculine and the feminine energy. It just sounds so amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, I know, I know that you wear many different hats. Do you still do yoga, teach yoga or? Mm -hmm. I do. I do. I'm a yoga instructor. Um, I also am a meditation teacher. I've been teaching and practicing yoga for over 20 years. And I found that, you know, I used to do a lot of privates and all different types of things. I also now leave retreats where they are looking at, you know, the, the women who come are looking at where they are in their life, what's coming forward. And we come into our yoga practice and meditation in order to go deeper and really listen from that place. So I find that they all work so beautifully together as a stillness practice to come inward and to check into what that wisdom is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's so amazing. How often do you lead these retreats? So I've been doing one a year. You know, I still have kids. I will say my daughter uh, is turning 17 actually right now today. Um, My my other, thank you. Yes. And so my other daughter is 18. And so they, you know, it's been an interesting space. So the last retreat was over a year ago. We went to Morocco those two years, which was amazing, which I loved, which I had been a year prior. And I just felt in my heart, like I'm meant to lead people here. And I also felt like I've been here before, you know, I felt so comfortable there. And so that was a, just a really exotic retreat because all the women that traveled with me had never been there before. And it was a really big leap for them to go across the world, be in a very different culture, um, experience so many amazing things and experience themselves in a new way too. So, so cool. So I'm really curious, like, you know, when you go, when you take them on these retreats, there's something about that that allows them to connect with themselves. I'm very mm-hmm. curious about how you, where you help them journey when you're outside your comfort zone in some ways, right? Like when you're yeah. in your comfort yeah. zone. Well, and I, I've been a couple of other places too. And it's like, when I started leaving, relating retreats, my first one was in around 2009. And that was a long time ago. And you know how you evolve in everything that you're doing. Well, you fast forward to Morocco and it was like, I know that I want an experience, a container for these women that everything's taken care of because I know you have kids and I have kids and it's like, oh my gosh, how many things come at us, you know, continuously throughout the day. And we love, we love it. And at the same time, there's a sense too, that we kind of get to the side of ourselves in a way. And, and we put some of the things, our creative desires to the side to attend to our families and our children's and whatnot. And so when you have that space that everything's taken care, like I have them pay one fee, right? Everything's taken care except for their yeah. personal shopping and stuff. And so meals come that are just beautifully prepared. You know, all you have to do is arrive and sit down and, and nourish yourself. Um, we have, um, what I basically do is I take seven days. And I take in, you know, the, the method, my awareness transformation method that I take my clients through um, over a longer period of time and also in a group format. And I reduce it. I distill it. So it is consumable and beautifully informative during that mm-hmm. seven days. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's really great. Oh, that's really amazing. You know, my work is pretty similar to yours about helping women discover, helping people just discover who they are. 
so mm-hmm. much of our life we lose ourselves and especially when like you said so much coming at you it's so easy to get lost so what transpired you to want to do this work well i think my own life um i've actually written a book it's my memoir it's called roadmap to radiance it came out in 2016 book. i'm setting thank it you. down yeah thank wow. you thank you um yeah it's on audible as well as print and um i actually recorded it on audible so it's me speaking i love when you hear the author sharing their story you know yes. and that was a cool experience so i think it was really my life you know i grew up in a family where my mother was an alcoholic my dad was often gone we had everything that we needed you know financially and everything we grew up in a beautiful place but i didn't have the connection to my family and so i grew up really fast like oh i got to take care of my mother kind of thing and it was like where would my childhood go and then my self esteem was low i mean all of those things that sort of lead you down that path of promiscuity and drugs and alcohol and um and i talk about this in a way like some of you listening like it might be like oh my gosh she talks about it so easily what i want to share with you is that i've done a lot of healing work and a lot of inner child and deep work and it's really transformed as almost like it feels like a different life Yes. you know like i've had like nine lives you know and you might be able to relate too so when i speak about it i know you know it can be such a painful uh time and you can get stuck in those places and it can have an effect on every choice of your life and you're not really living you're just i was just wondering when i mean i tried to kill myself a couple of times and just wondering like when am i going to die because this is not living you know so that's kind of a short version but i just really where it really came about was 2009 which is not been that long ago right yeah yeah and i was sitting at the bottom of my closet my girls were young my husband and i were married i was broke i had lied about a lot of finances i had had a trust fund and i spent it all i felt like i didn't manage things well i was dumb i wasn't good at business i mean like everything that i could bring in i completely beat myself up about and i was sitting there trying to figure out well how do i do it this time i've tried a couple of different ways that didn't work how do i do it so my family gets the insurance like that's how i was thinking and in that moment it was like boom and it was like i heard something audibly and it was like you can't do this now and and really i thought okay it's my grandmother i was super close to her or is it god like what is this and i thought okay I'm going to listen. Like it woke me up. It's one of those things where it's like it's almost like somebody comes in and just snaps their fingers and just wakes you up to the moment and being in your body. And so I said, "Okay, I need a sign. <laughs> like I need some here because, you know, I'm just running on vapors." And I remember I was a yoga teacher at the time, so I went to this workshop with Baron Baptiste, who is one of my instructors and teachers. And this placard or this banner, this little postcard was talking about life coaching training and it really was like you know how something calls your name it was like it had lights around it <laughs> and it was like come yes. over here come over here and so i looked at it i took it and that was it that was when i first started my training and i was like that was my sign so i knew i was always good at helping people because people were like i'm so calm around you and you have such wisdom like are you an old soul and if you follow numerology at all i'm a 9 which mm-hmm. is like spiritual teacher old soul you know all of that and i was like well yeah i guess you know so anyway that's kind of how it began and ever since then i've you know done a lot of trainings and just continuing to hone my craft and 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 my intuition and and my work too i'm on the journey we are just like everybody yes. i'm on the journey too i'm always wanting to live in that place of being more free you know yeah so yeah Oh my goodness that was just so inspiring and such an open hearted share and that mm-hmm. helps you know so everybody is has their own struggles and this just you sharing your path and your journey is like so amazing like how you've been able to overcome so much in such a short amount of time it's not that long it's like yeah. just 11 years ago yeah wow and i think too i that was the first time i got a coach I didn't really know about it. I mean, I knew about coaching with sports and stuff, you know, but I grew up thinking I've got to do this all myself. And I think yeah. part of that came from sort of the survivor mentality, like I can't trust anybody but myself. Right. And when when I worked and started my coaching training in 2009, the woman who was training, she became my coach. 
my personal coach. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'll never not have a coach because I'm moving further faster, not meaning that I'm hustling, but I'm not getting stuck in all the stuff right. that was just keeping me in my head overthinking things all the time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I can also so relate to your story. Like I've had bouts of depression and anxiety and, and, and wanting to kill myself and because I was so sick and there was all these things, but all these things shape who you are and what gifts you can offer to this, to the world after that. They really come into you after that. Yeah, I so agree. And I look what where we are now. And it's a, oh my gosh, we're all going through this. That's what's so interesting is that we don't have to hide. You know, if somebody's hiding, I'm like, I get you, please just reach out. Like we're all being pushed. Even those of us who've been doing work for a long time, I feel like I have a lot of resources. So it's like really great, but I get triggered too. I get pushed by so many things. That's because we're always growing and expanding. It's not going to end until we transition and go on to the next phase of growth. And I think that can allow people to come forward in their vulnerability. I hope, I hope. I mean, I get it. I used to be an isolator, but it's like we're isolated, but you don't have to isolate. Like there's so many great great ways to reach out and to ask for help and guidance. That's know? the most important thing. It's like just connecting and asking for help and, and asking for help is not a bad thing. So many people think it's a bad thing. Like I have to be able to do it on my own and especially very strong women, right? Like you think they just have to do it on, they just hunker down, do it, finish it. And that's not where the answer lies. And, you know, one mm-hmm. of the things that you had um, I'd read about you and even in conversations with you, there's a lot of diving inside, like going inwards and using that inner wisdom. Yes. Yes. I mean, I think we all have that. And for me, the biggest thing was trust. I mean, raise your hand, you guys, if you're listening and you're like, Oh, like, who do I trust? Like, that's such a big thing. I mean, how do I even trust to myself? And so for me, when I started practicing yoga, my first class was in 1997 when I moved to California for the first time. And what I want to also say is that for me, yoga isn't just yoga asana or postures. Yoga for me is I, I live by the eight limb path, which is pranayama, breath work, right? Meditation, yeah. you know, yamas, niyamas, and so on. And so that for me has been an incredible guide into that ancient wisdom and those wisdom practices that have invited me in here inside of my own heart to listen more deeply, mm. to, to understand. And I so am appreciative of having guides on this journey too, because again, when you get in your head, you're like, I'm not in yeah. the wisdom, I'm in the whirling, you know? So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so do you have any, any suggestions for how to stop that whirling in your head and just drop inside? Yeah. So here's the thing that people think about meditation too, which is a complete myth, right? It's like, um, I got to stop the thoughts and I'm like, uh, let me put a big banner up because that's not really what it's about. You know, I know that we're in a group together and one of the things in that group is being in silence. Yes. And I've been on silent retreat. I've actually designed silent retreats for myself, especially when I was writing my book. And one of those things about being in silence and about meditating is that you're with the experience, which means that you let things move through you. We're all kind of in that space right now, grabbing, many people grabbing for distractions because it can be uncomfortable just to simply be in the experience. And so what I want to say is you're not doing it wrong, right? Just simply be in the experience of noticing everything that comes up and then bring yourself back to the breath. So if we just do that right now and have everyone just, if you're listening, close your eyes unless you're driving, okay, or doing something that you can't close your eyes for. Mm -hmm. And I'd like you to take a breath in through your nose and exhale out of your nose. Again, really focus on the breath as it moves in through the nose. There's that little pause. And then breathe out of the nose. And one more time, breathe in and breathe out. And open your eyes. Mm. So the breath can be this anchor, in a sense, a reminder of coming into our body and being with the present moment. And again, 
we look for all kinds of things to distract us, whether it's Facebook or food or alcohol or, oh, I got to go. You know, I'll hear my kids. They're like, I just got a text. I got to answer it. I'm like, you have to get, you have to answer it right now. No, right. it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. So I just say the breath and I, I even, even standing in the grocery store line, take three breaths before going into a meeting, before going on a Zoom, really come into the body and simply be. Oh, I love that. Yeah. It was so calming. Your voice is so calming and it's mm-hmm. just such a, such a simple thing, but so easy for people to forget. It's so easy to forget yeah. about it. And here is something that's so valuable. It's available to you at all times. It's yours. It's free. It's it doesn't free. cost any money. <laughs> and, and the thing too, is that we do forget. And, you know, one of my spiritual mentors, um, that I worked with, um, 2011, I think we started our journey together. We worked together for a couple of years. She introduced to me what's called the book of knowing. Mm. And what this contains is it could be a journal, it could be a binder, it could be something online, but it's your book of knowing. So you would call it my book of knowing. And these are things that you can return to. They're like resources that say, come into this body, come into this present moment, because sometimes we forget them. You know, something happens like now and it's like we we go into um, fight or flight, right? Okay, my book of knowing, breathe, right? It could be serenity prayer. It could be meditate. It could be, um, you know, any of those things, any of those resources, right? That's like, ah, I'm right here. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I love that book of knowing. Yeah, me too. I think I share it with my clients. I think it's amazing. And you can make your own, you can make it beautiful, you can make it creative, you can teach it to your kids, because they need that too. think of this, these resources and tools that guide us deeper into this inner part of our wisdom. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, And everything that you say, I think that's what I said right in the beginning, there's so much grace to how you're bringing this information and knowledge to people. It's so easy to absorb. Like I can just hear you talk. It's very, very, it's almost it's like there's like a hypnotic trance. <laughs> like it's just absorbing this information, which is so calming and soothing. And so many people need to hear this today, like right? what's happening in the world. We need this more than ever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So thank you for bringing this work to the world. Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, I feel it's my mission. You know, when you feel led, oh, I feel goodness. led. I just, I feel led. And I think that this is so needed, as you say, on all levels, whether it's with children, whether whatever age you are, and there's so much wisdom at all of these places to, to tap into. Yeah. Yeah. And one of your specialities is helping people with transitions, right? Like when they're transitioning from one thing to another or ending or beginning. Can you share more about that? Because especially right now, I'm thinking there's so much transition happening for people with yes. being locked down then coming back out. Like I even coming, when they said that May 19th, everything's going to start opening up. I had a moment of like <gasps> panic. I was like, how am I going to integrate back into the world? Right? And yes. so I was just curious, like if you had any thoughts or suggestions for that transition and just sharing your wisdom around that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's such an interesting time, right? A transition. And what I liken it to is when I'm in a yoga practice, and when I'm guiding a practice, oftentimes, we just think of the pose, triangle pose, trikonasana, and then I need to get over to warrior two, but there's space in between. And even thinking of the pose, the pose has many, many elements of transition. With each breath, we are brought into a new space within the shape of the pose. I liken that to our life in the sense that like right now, many people are like, my life is on hold. Well, yeah, it's actually not. And it's not, you're not able to put your life on hold ever because as we continue to breathe, we are in spaces and moments and breaths. And so it's actually your mind, right? or your choice that's saying my life is on hold, I'm waiting for the next event. Are you holding your breath? No, you're not holding your breath. So why aren't you still living in between? And so if we look at that, we can start to look at how do I handle change? How have I handled a transition in the past? Because all we're simply talking about is a beginning. There's the the middle part of the living or the sustenance. And then there's the end. And in Buddhism, right, this is called impermanence. There is always the birth and the death cycle. 
when I breathe in, it's birth. When I breathe out, it's death. And we're so afraid of death in any way or letting go that we grip. And that actually causes more suffering. So this time period hopefully has been a space for people to sift and sort. And so what I I think I would encourage you to do and what I'm working with with my clients right now is there's a self-inquiry phase Mm -hmm. of what was my life like before and what no longer is serving me Mm -hmm. from how I was being in my life at that point. And you can write lists if you're a writer. I like lists and things. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And then you can look at, well, how do I want to move forward differently? Like, who am I becoming? And in that becoming, do I want to eat dinner with my family three nights a week? Do I want to only have two appointments a day and then have creative space in my life? How would that feel for me? Do I want to, you know, unsubscribe from a few of those things that don't really align with me anymore. Like really a self-inquiry because when you boil it down, it's like, what brings me joy? What, what lights me up? And even I have clients who are completely changing things in their lives, like questioning, who am I? Like I wore all these masks before and which is really interesting right now because everybody (laughs) is putting on these masks, but we're actually taking off. We have an opportunity to take the masks off and come out of this in a new way, a new rhythm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Wow. Wow. That was just incredible. Just that information about how easy it is to forget, to ask that question, like, who am I? What do I want? What is going to, what is serving me? What is not serving me? Simple questions and how easy it is to get caught up in the doing. Yeah. And when, when that thing, cause here's what happens. They're like, but I have kids, but I have my husband, but I have this, but I have that. And I'm like, okay, let's come back into your body. Take those three breaths when that starts to happen, because you've just gone somewhere else. You are no longer in the present moment. And so having that awareness, this is so key, having that awareness of when you get swept away almost by the current, right? Come back to the three breaths and ask yourself, What do I need for my creative soul? Because as you personally grow and transform, you add to a new collective healing. Oh, yes. Yes. The collective. Yes. It contributes. It starts with you. And then it just everybody benefits from it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's so, so, and so amazing. Really amazing hearing you talk about this. Is there anything else that's coming up for you, especially at this time, like as you're working with your clients and your own journey, is there anything that has really stood out for you? Like you said, like got highlighted this time for you. Yeah, for me, it's truth. I'm on a, I've always been a truth seeker. I've actually got a tattoo that says truth. I got a tattoo that says love oh. and trust. These have all come in the last few years. But for me, it's truth. It's not only looking in to know what is what is your truth? You know, really asking yourself, like, because when I think of truth, I think of true power. And power can be misunderstood. Power's not ego. Power's not domineering. Power's not, you know, I'm going to force something. Power is something that you're born with. And it's your beingness. And nobody can take it away, but it can get covered up by a lot of stuff. Patterns, stories, limitations. I know you do this work too. And it's like it's like a wool blanket sort of covering something up and you feel almost paralyzed that you can't get out from under. But I feel like this is a truth time. And I know even since I published my book, I feel like, because there was a lot of truth in that book that came out for me and it was like a big step forward. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm actually putting this in writing and people are going to read this and hear this. But I knew that I needed to. Then all of a sudden, like all these things, you know, we had the Me Too and all this truth. I feel that there's so much truth being exposed on all levels. And in yoga, we talk about, you know, Kali, who is the goddess of destruction, but also creation too, in that sense. And so we're, in order for things to, to begin, many things have to end. So what is true for you? Like, that's what I go back to the thing of the self inquiry, you know, feel it in your heart. If you start to feel this like icky, weird feeling in your chest or your throat or your stomach, that's indication that something is like, not aligned, something is being trapped within you that wants to be uncovered. Mm -hmm. So I think truth is this big thing. And it's a big discussion. But I just wanted to introduce that When you have awareness of that, the first place can be the body awareness, then you can begin to get more curious 
Do I need to ask for help? Is there something I've not been doing that needs to come forward? Um, what, it, what is that true place for me? So it's almost like a compass for you. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, definitely. It really is because I, I know, and I know I got my clients in that too, because if you can feel it in your body, you come back into your body and then you come back into your body and you're like, Oh, okay. I can tap into the inner, you know, yeah. because we are, we are not this body, right? But we right. are here in this body for this life and it can be this incredible life, but we also have that realization that there's that deeper, huge amazing wisdom inside that truly guides us mm -hmm. and and we don't have to be confined or defined by our old patterns and limitations and stories yes wow yeah. i'm just yeah. taking everything in it's just so beautiful and it resonates on so many different levels deep in my soul and at all that you're speaking it's just so expansive it's creating so much of expansion and helping people like look outside their little trapped worlds yeah. And I often give this analogy of like, you know, this little f f frog in a pond, the frog in the pond story, where the frog thinks this is the entire world, but there's a whole world outside and don't have to be trapped anymore. And so many of us live life in this little trapped space. I used to be that yeah. way too. So I really just beautiful all that you're sharing. I almost want to be in silence, just absorbing all that information. Well, it, it's so interesting. I'm a recovered controller. I used to try to control everything because growing up, right, I felt like I needed, I need to be safe. So I wanted to control all the elements. I wanted to plan it all out. I think what this uh, shelter in place has taught us more than anything is flexibility, adaptability, shape shifting. We are shape shifting right now. Mm. We are becoming, we are becoming something new or being invited to. You can fight it and resist it as much as you want, or you can flow with it. And I can, it can be really, really hard stuff to flow with, but the more that you can let go and the more you can realize that and come into breath and have some sort of a practice that helps to guide you within, from within, then it can be a much more, I'm going to just use the word agreeable journey where it's not about fighting. You know, one thing I'm hearing, and people may disagree with me on this, and I'm totally okay with that, but I keep hearing it more and more. People are saying, we gotta, we've got those people fighting the front lines. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. What are we fighting? Like, that just sets us up to fight things, fight things, fight things. But what if, right, we come into flow with what it is we want to create? And I just remembered, I mean, I think Socrates said something like this, but it's really, it is true. Like we can't fight cancer. We can't fight, you know, this and that because we only give it power. But if we come into flow with nature or with what is coming from our hearts and this greater inner wisdom, we rise above to a higher place of evolution and expansion and solution. Yeah. Yeah. Being yeah. the flow. Yeah. I learned this a long time ago from one of my spiritual teachers what you resist will persist. And so mm -hmm. if you're resisting that and not giving, just being in the flow and allowing, it, it, that's been one of the biggest transitions, I, transformations I had to make about letting go of control. Control was like my, it's my second name. If I can put my second name, I put it, put, used to be, not anymore. I have to consciously say that too. It's yeah. very easy to fall into those old patterns. Yeah, I agree. And it breaks down to fear and love. Mm -hmm. And I also see that we can actually have a friendship with fear. Okay, hold on before you hear me out here, because we can let it guide us in the sense that it can bring us into more awareness, like, oh, that totally, like, gave me an emotional charge. I'm afraid. There's two things, I think. Am I safe, right? Because I've gone through a lot of things where it's like, I have to make sure I'm safe. You know, right. you don't want to be walking down the street and there's an attacker or something. Am I safe? You always want to ask that. But then if I'm safe, like what's the fear? Because it's actually an illusion. Like what is the backing of that? And what can it teach me? Mm -hmm. Right. And how do I move forward? That's my, my podcast is called truth and dare. It's like, what is the truth here? And then how can I dare myself? How can I step to an edge that takes me to a new center of growth? Oh, I love that. Yeah, that, that brings me to share where, where people can find you and more about your work and your books. Yeah. So, of course, my website, which is camdenhoke.com. I love to connect on Instagram and Facebook. I'm on social. Um, I also have a free women's Facebook group called Peace Seekers and Space Expanders. 
Um, we have li awesome. live, it's great. We have live shows every week. There's actually a retreat that you can do as you come in. There's yoga, there's breathing practices. It's really lovely. We have a lot of connection there. And, uh, and I have all kinds of other, you know, I have one-on-one -on -one work, which you'll see on my um, website. I have a group coaching awareness collective, and I've been doing virtual retreats during this event and teaching live stream yoga as well. So find me, if you find me on social, you'll, you'll connect in too. So I, I look forward to meeting you. Yeah. Nice. I'll put everything in the show notes as well. What's the name okay. of the group again? It's Peace Seekers and space expanders. Okay, I'll put that in the show notes as well. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Is there any other last few words of wisdom for all the listeners? I think the big thing too is remember loving kindness for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's like we're not, we're not going to get it perfect when they say, you know, you can go and move into your life. Be curious and be loving and so kind to yourself and take that pause of those breaths before maybe even saying yes or no to something so that you really have that internal check-in for yourself and have that awareness of what really serves moving forward, not only for my personal transformation, but for the greater good. Yeah, love and kindness. That mm -hmm. seems like a very beautiful radar mm -hmm. to use. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, beautiful and incredible. And thank you so much for your time and generosity and sharing your beautiful wisdom. Thank you, Padma. I'm so happy to be here. And it was great. I mean, we had a wonderful conversation. I'm just happy to share. And I hope that there's been benefit um, as you're listening that you have received. So thank you. Oh, 100%. I benefited. Yeah. And I am 100% sure that everyone who's listening is really going to have some amazing takeaways. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to this podcast. Make sure to tag me in Instagram at Padma Ali to share your takeaways from this episode. And lastly, share with your friends and family so they can also benefit from listening to this podcast. For more tips, go on to our website, PadmaAli.com and connect with me at the next episode. Take care. Bye.